Typhoon Haiyan struck just days before, as we said, a major United Nations summit on climate change, referring to what he called the hellstorm that had just devastated his homeland. The head of the Philippines delegation made an emotional plea for the world to take immediate action to reverse climate change. Super Typhoon Haiyan, perhaps unknown to many here, made landfall in my own family's hometown. And the devastation is staggering. I struggle to find words even for the images that we see on the news coverage. In solidarity with my countrymen who are struggling to find food back home and with my brother who has not had food for the last three days, with all due respect, Mr. President, and I mean no disrespect for your kind hospitality. I will now commence a voluntary fasting for the climate. I'm joined now by WGBH News science editor Heather Goldstone. Well, Heather, this is someone from the Climate Change Commission in the Philippines. He's saying he's going to uh, fast until the UN Climate Change Commission does something. And he's basically saying this is proof. That this climate change. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, he calls it climate madness. And with all due respect to his passion and the emotions he's feeling right now, I have to say somebody could very well starve to death waiting for these climate talks to make substantial progress. I mean, that's that's my personal opinion, but they've been all but stalemated. And at this point, the expectations for these particular talks are not major progress. It's, it's maybe the architecture of a f future agreement at best. Heather, just looking at the pictures of this complete and utter devastation to people like us. We're used to seeing tornadoes in, you know, Tornado Alley, Oklahoma. That's what it looks like, the uprooting. The, it, it doesn't look like classic uh, hurricane or typhoon kind of damage. Well, it's, it's actually a combination. Um, the, the wind speeds were such, you know, 195 miles per hour estimated by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center uh, when, it, when it hit. It's like a, an EF3 or EF4, a mid to major tornado. But then that was also combined with essentially a tsunami because the storm surge, whereas we're used to a storm surge means tides are a foot or two higher than they would normally be. The, the shape of the bay in Tokloban is such that it just funneled it in there and basically did make it a tsunami. And so there are also these pictures very reminiscent of the, you know, the tsunami in Japan in 2011, where they've got boats that are now blocks inland. Um, so just got hit with a combination of those. And that very interesting thing that uh, Cecilia Lazaro mentioned about the landslides, that is a very common thing also in, in the Philippines. But just to get a perspective of this storm, CNN did this amazing graphic where they overlaid um, her, Hurricane uh, Haiyan over, over uh, the east coast of New England. And, and look at that. I mean, it, oh it's just, it's, it's absolutely enormous. It's an enormous storm. It is uh, the, the strongest storm on record. Now, granted, that's, that's not hundreds or thousands of years of, of record keeping. We've been keeping records for, you know, 120 or so years. Um, but this is a, an incredibly powerful storm. Uh, it, it's been called a super typhoon yeah. in the news, which it's uh, interesting. You know, we called Sandy last year a super storm, which was just an unofficial designation that I think probably the media came up with. Um, but in this case, super uh, actually is an, an official designation uh, of the, the typhoon warning center that basically makes it equivalent to a, a category four to five mm. hurricane. Sandy was one of the biggest ones we had ever seen here. They were calling that a super storm. But we have a picture there just to show that one by contrast to, I mean, that's pretty big also. Well, I, I mean, the contrast here, Sandy was, it was enormous in size um, and was a very powerful storm. But when Sandy hit the East Coast, it was a Category 2 hurricane, not uh, a Category 4 or 5. And so this one had both the size and the power and then that storm surge, mm -hmm. um, really just a, a deadly combination. So just in terms of the, of the climate, so you're, you're, not, you're not encouraged that the U.N. climate con uh, commission is going to uh, make any more. I, I don't think that this is going to change the situation, and, and the situation has pretty much been at a stalemate. I mean, obviously, uh, those hardest hit are saying maybe this is a, a sign of climate change, and, and I would say that a lot of the scientific community would be on board with saying this is potentially a sign of what uh, we see uh, to come in the future. But have been pretty conservative about whether or not this is actually uh, a storm that was heightened by climate change. Maybe a little bit. I saw one scientist saying mm, maybe added five miles per hour to the wind speed. That's what pushes mm. this storm past Hurricane yeah. Camille in terms of being the strongest on record, but it certainly wouldn't have changed the also end result. Also late in the season and the changing water temperatures. All right, Heather Goldstone, always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. And we'll try to be happier yeah, next I time. Yeah, I keep saying let's do something fun.